Good morning. Welcome to the barber shop. I don't know about you, but uh, just having this in front kind of brings back some nostalgia for me because when I was uh, in, I want to say middle school, middle school, maybe high school, um, we had a computer and it had Windows Paint on it. And so we would make these videos of my dad's camcorder and where we would um, do some drawings on the computer with Windows Paint, much like uh, something like this. And then we would animate it by moving the camera around. And then we would cut and then go to another scene and we'd make these kind of home movies on the computer and intersperse it with you know, live acting and, and that sort of thing. So anyway, holding that up there, just brought that to mind. And I thought, man, has anybody else used Windows Paint back in the day? Like early, I mean, Windows 95, that's Windows. See, kids today, they have no idea. They have no idea what we went through to make videos. They've got apps to make videos. They've got stop motion apps. They've got all kinds of different things that they can use. They didn't have the painstaking process of clicking the, the paintbrush or the little paint pen in Windows Paint and drawing something and uh, taking your video camcorder, your dad's video camcorder, and taking a shot of that image on the screen. They have no idea. Anyway, I digress. Welcome to the barber shop. Let me know that you're here. I want to give a special shout out as we get started to my dad, Barry Barber. He was going to join on this morning, but if you jump on here and you hear this, I want you to give a happy retirement day shout out to my pops, Barry Barber. Today's his last day and he is retiring um, from his job. He is uh, probably going to be busier than ever. But as of today, it's his last day and he's retiring. So a special shout out to you, Pops. Happy retirement day. Have a great day. Enjoy your last day uh, of work there at Concrete Supply. Well, good morning to you. Hop on in. Come on in. The barber shop. It is nice in here. And how have you been enjoying the weather lately here in South Carolina? I know many of you watch from other places and so happy that you tune in and join in with us. As you could see from our title this morning, hey, there's my mom. Good morning, mom. As you can see from the title this morning, we're going to be talking about unspeakable joy, part two. We're going again. I love the fact that we can take a topic and not just spend one week on it, but we can spend another week on it because these topics that we've been talking about are, um, are endless, it seems that the Bible has a lot to say about joy. And I think that there is a joy deficit. Would you agree? Good morning, Sally. There is no joy deficit in you, Miss Sally, because uh, you're always joyful when we run into you. And I, I love uh, seeing you at church and uh, watching you worship. And so thank you for exuding, exuding joy. But I believe, by and large, in the church... In Christendom, Christianity, there is a joy deficit. And so why wouldn't we teach on it a little bit? Why wouldn't we talk about it a little bit? Good morning, Harold. As you're hopping in, please, 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 please comment. Clickety-clack on the keyboard. Use those thumbs if you're watching on your phone. Let me know that you're here. Usually I have a question that I'm asking you. Um, but today, my question as we started was, does anybody remember Windows Paint from like Windows 95, early Windows, Windows 98. If you had a computer back in the uh, the mid to late 90s, um, I was showing my, my daughter's drawing again, the barbershop logo right there, and it made me reminiscent of the artwork I used to do on the computer back in the mid to late 90s, and we'd make these videos. So if you remember using Windows Paint, having a little fun on the computer, you can... Uh, Clickety-clack on the keyboard and let me know about that. Good morning to you, Danny. What's happening, my man? 
And just, uh, just a note, since Danny hopped on, uh, a note of renou- uh, announcement, they're taking a crew to the return in Washington, D.C. Um, I believe that is next, next weekend. Is that right? Danny, you can uh, post any information that you want to about the return in there. And uh, we'll be praying, praying for our nation. Amen. We need prayer in our nation. And so uh, just want to give a shout out to them, Danny and his lovely wife, Jung, taking a crew to Washington, D.C. I believe it's September 26th. I could have the date wrong, but that's that. Let's talk about joy. Good morning, Deborah. Thanks for joining in. All right, as you know, we're going to talk a little bit about joy, unspeakable joy. We'll do a review of last week, get everybody caught up. We were reading in 1 Peter 1, 8 that says, uh, in the King James, you got to read this in the King James. Uh, I usually don't use the King James just because, you know, I like to read some translations in the modern English, but this translation has that word unspeakable, that phrase joy unspeakable. Okay, so, whom having not seen, ye love, ye, you got to put the ye, and, and not Kanye, ye, uh, but whom having not seen ye, as in you, you love, in him, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And remember we sang that old hymn from the year 1900, 1900 by Barney E. Warren. Ah, joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. Had no idea what we were singing when I used to sing that growing up in church at Cathedral of Faith. What were we singing? Joy unspeakable and full of... And we would be, you know, just happy and, you know, bopping. That's like that's like the bop. You kind of kind of bounce a little bit. It's not like a dance, but it's like a just kind of bop. You bop your head. And <laughs> and so we'd bounce a little bit. It's kind of a fun, upbeat kind of song. And the key, you know, the piano and the organ are going. And you can, sometimes you get the drums in there and the bass and all that. And and you're just kind of doing the bop and you sing this. And it's kind of an upbeat song and it kind of makes you feel a certain way. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. But we had no idea what we were singing about. I didn't as a child had any idea what we were singing about. I read it in the Contemporary English Bible, and it says, Although you've never seen him, you love him. And even though you don't see him now, you trust him. And so rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. That fact that, huh, what are we rejoicing in? What are we having joy unspeakable about? Well, we're having joy unspeakable about the fact that he loves us. Man, God loved us so much that he gave his son Jesus. Jesus loves us. How could we not be experiencing joy, joy unspeakable? And I love this, uh, just read you a few of these lyrics as we review here, Um, joy unspeakable. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. What joy, what joy we can experience and what freedom we can experience in Christ. I hope you're catching this today. I hope you're hearing it and experiencing the joy of the Lord in your life. Hey, Fredna, I know you've got joy this morning. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then we define joy for you. So let me uh, redefine for you what the word joy means. In the Greek, it's the word kara. And there's a lot of different Greek words for joy. If you go into Vine's Expository Dictionary or Strong's Concordance, you'll see a lot of different Greek words for joy. And they have a different nuance of meaning to them. And so joy, I found this definition in the word kara in the Greek, is a feeling of inner gladness, of delight or rejoicing. And joy in the New Testament is virtually always used to signify a feeling of of happiness based on spiritual realities. And we put happiness in, in quotes because joy and happiness aren't synonymous because happiness is fleeting, joy is everlasting. Okay? And, um... This, it's this, this happiness that's based on spiritual realities and independent upon what happens. It's an inner gladness. It's a deep-seated pleasure, depth of assurance and confidence that ignites a cheerful heart. And you know that in Proverbs, that a cheerful heart doeth good like a medicine. So, you take your medicine this morning? Did you take your vitamins? Did you take your joy vitamins this morning? Well, if you haven't, let's get a good dose right now. 
What do we say? How can we have joy? We can recognize, first of all, that joy is a byproduct of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. That fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. You remember the flannel graph. We put the fruit on there. And it is a byproduct not only of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives, but it is a byproduct of our faith in Christ, of our faith in Christ. That uh, Romans 15, 13, that the God of all hope would fill us completely with joy and peace because why? Because we trust in him. We have this confident assurance in him, our hope and our faith and our trust is in him. And as a byproduct of that, we would be filled completely with joy and peace peace. And then we overflow, it says there in Romans 15, 13, we overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Sally, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's Nehemiah. Um, Kiki, Crystal, good morning, you guys. Good morning, Pastor X. How are you, my friend? Let's talk about joy a little bit more. So that's review. Hopefully you've gotten caught up. If you're just joining now, welcome, because now we're diving into some new stuff. All right, the scripture, one of the scriptures that uh, my dad used to quote, and I gave a shout out to my dad earlier this morning. It says, retirement today, last day of work. Happy retirement again, pops. He would, he would quote this verse often. He would say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will what? Can you finish that for me? You finish that for me. Uh, I'm doing a lot of preaching, a lot of talking you finished that. This is the day the Lord has made. That's Psalm 118, 24. We will do what? What will we do with the Lord? The day the Lord has made? Go ahead. Give you a moment. I'm going to drink my water. Help a brother out. I know it, but I know you know it. Now, last week, some folks were helping me out because I uh, was having these moments of like a brain fog. I don't know. Is it because I'm tired or because I'm 40? I have no idea. Uh, there you go. Comments are flooding in. We will rejoice. Amen, Ruth. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's right, Sally. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Guess what, guys? My dad just hopped on. Happy retirement. Everybody flood the, flood the comments with some uh, celebration emojis, cake emojis. Let's throw him a virtual party right now. Happy retirement. Yes, this is the day the Lord has made. That's right, Pop. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so the thing is, we have, we have a responsibility. We have an obligation. The impetus is on us to rejoice and be glad in the day that the Lord has made. And so when we start our day with recognizing and realizing that he has made this day, he has a plan and a purpose for this day, he has a a calling for you to walk out in this day, and how should you go about this day? But by rejoicing, by rejoicing and be glad in it. Guess what? You may wake up, today's a Friday. I wish every day was a Friday. Friday is easy to wake up and be and rejoice and be glad in it, right? But there are Mondays. Hopefully every day's not a Monday or doesn't feel like a Monday to you. Joel Osteen wrote this book, Every Day of Friday. Never read it, but I like the title because the fact is that most people wake up on Friday and they're like, yes, it's Friday, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And because of the day of the week it is, we we tend to feel a little bit more happy or upbeat. But Every day is the day the Lord has made, and therefore we, we should rejoice and be glad in it. We should rejoice and be glad in it. That means we got to dig down deep, you guys. Even on a Monday, we got to dig down deep, and we got to pull up the joy of the Lord that's already been deposited to our born-again, recreated human spirits. You got it? You got it? Let's rejoice and be glad. All right. Now, I got to tell you, the difference between joy, good morning, Dawn. Good to see you this morning, bright and early. There in Oklahoma. Hey, uh, the difference between joy and happiness is this. Happiness is a pleasant mental state, okay? The world talks a lot about happiness. Happiness, you know, there's some, some bizarre ideas of what pursue, of what constitutes happiness. We've got this, there's even this book or this, this phrase. I think it's even in our, in our constitution. Uh, I, I probably really dragged myself a, a hole there because I, I didn't do so well in government um, and, and, and economics and, and all, world history and all that that stuff. So anyway, that there was this thing about the pursuit of happiness. Somebody, uh, you know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's in our, either in our, in our constitution or the preamble or, or, or something. 
um, that we would have self-evident. Uh, yeah, I'm, no, stop. Just stop. Stop try, trying to quote that. You, if you know it, you can put it in the comments. That there is this pursuit of happiness that we have. It's part of our inalienable rights and that sort of thing. But um, the world pursues and experiences happiness, and happiness is dependent upon our surroundings and our circumstances. I love this, that, that, that celebration that's happening, this party that's happening in the comments for my dad. That's great. Fantastic. And I got to say to my dad, you know, you could, you could experience happiness today because it's your last day of work on the job. But guess what? Even if it was your first day of work or your, your middle of, of the day, your work year, that you could, <laughs> thank you, the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you, sis. That's awesome. That there's this pursuit of happiness, okay? If you could have this happiness based upon what's happening, happiness is dependent upon what's happening around you. And so I gotta say this, how would you feel? Let's uh, pretend some scenario. Um, and for many of you, this may have happened. So you're doing well on your job, your boss calls you into his office, and I don't know about you, but I've had jobs where if the boss calls you into the office, it's much like going to the principal's office immediate sense of anxiety <laughs> that overwhelms you. And why is this? Why should we have such anxiety about us just because we've been summoned to a meeting? I have no idea. But maybe it's because we, we're we aware of our performance and maybe we don't give ourselves enough credit for how well we're doing. Or we know that we're doing horribly on our job and something's about to happen. So this pretend scenario, go with me in the theater of your mind to this pretend scenario. You're, uh, you feel like you're doing a good job on your, on your job and boss calls you into his, his or her office and they say, guess what? You have been doing amazing. You are a standout employee. We're gonna give you an award and matter of fact, we're giving you a raise. All right, how would you feel? How would you feel? You may pat yourself on the back. You may start beaming with excitement and joy, a smile on your face because you're getting a raise. Yes, you've been get, you're getting recognition for the performance that you have, have done on your job. So how do you feel? You feel happy, right? Well, let's take that same scenario. You're summoned to the boss's office, brings you in, and they say, you know, uh, this is going to be tough. It's tough for me to say this, but uh, you haven't been performing as well as we'd hoped. Matter of fact, we feel like we're paying you more than you're worth, and so you're fired. Mm. What happens then? The smile goes away. There's a deep-seated despair <laughs> that may come upon you. Some may even sink to a state of depression because now they've been let go. You can see the difference that, that happiness would be based upon these excellent circumstances. You get a raise. And then um, unhappiness or despair or depression based upon you didn't do so well and you got fired. Well, I would submit to you that the Christian, the believer, can have joy no matter what happens. You can have joy no matter you, whether you get a raise or whether you get fired. I see some angry things. I can see some, some crying in there because you got let go. Um, <laughs> I, I hope that those frowns would turn upside down any minute because if happiness is a, is a pleasant mental state, then joy is a pleasant spiritual state. It means that it doesn't change regardless of the news that you get. It doesn't change regardless of whether you got a good report or a bad report. And that's whether, whether on your job or from the doctor or from your family. It doesn't matter. Joy is this pleasant spiritual state and it doesn't change. It's constant. The world, the world knows nothing of true joy. Joy cannot be found by direct pursuit. We can't have this pursuit of joy because joy is a deposit and it's a byproduct of our faith in Christ and a byproduct of the Spirit's work in our lives. Matter of fact, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is where true joy takes place. True joy resides in the kingdom. The kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17 says this, it's not a matter of what we eat or drink, 
You know, and I've had some good food. I've had some food that I'm like, hmm, why did we eat this? Why did we make this? I've had some great experiences in restaurants. I've also had some poor experiences in restaurants. But happiness and the kingdom of God isn't about this. It's not a matter of what we eat or drink, but it is of living a life of goodness or righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that joy, joy in the Holy Ghost, as the King James would say, it has this respect to ourselves. It represents us as Christians. Uh, this is from David Guzik's commentary, pastor of, of Calvary Chapel in Santa Barbara. Um, he says that joy in the Holy Ghost represents Christians as so thinking and feeling under the works of the Holy Spirit that their joy may be viewed rather as that of the blessed agent who inspires it than their own. You see that? Joy in the Holy Ghost means that when people see my smile, when people see my happiness, they see me in good times and bad times, they recognize that how can I have these feelings of pleasantness, this pleasant spiritual state, and it's not because of my working or because of the circumstances around me, but because of the Spirit's work within me. And we give credit to him because it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. How can we do this? And uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 says, be joyful always. Be joyful always. You know, and that implies at all times, under all circumstances. Amen. And I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. You know, I, I, I wish I would have looked up some statistics about depression. And like depression is rampant. Depression is rampant in our society. Depression is even rampant in the church, and it should not be. This should not be. It is, this is a travesty that people, that the Christians would experience depression. And it shows me that there is a joy deficit in the body of Christ, and this should not be. That's the enemy's tactics. He is the oppressor. He is the depressor. He is the one who brings about those circumstances and situations in your life to get you to feel down and out and bad about yourself and all of these things. Yet we should be experiencing joy from the very depths of our soul because of the Spirit's work in our lives, okay? So how do we do this? Listen to this in John 15. John 15, 9 says, I have loved you, this is Jesus talking, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. You will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. You see that joy, uh, that we are containers, we, we are to be containers of joy, that we would be filled with joy, so much so that joy would overflow from within us and out upon us, and out upon the world and the people around us, that that joy that's within us would, uh, would exude so much that it would begin to infect and impact the people around us. Have you been around people who have been less than joyful? Uh, those who experience what we would call the mully grubs, or they're constantly throwing themselves pity parties. Is that a fun place to be? Is that a place where you want to spend more time with that person? No, no, I want to run, I want to get away. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, we should be the one to encourage that person and lift them up out of that. But if they're constantly pulling you down, then you've got to remove yourself from that situation. If they're not getting with the program and, 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 and you're not being able to help them because they're not teachable or receiving what you're trying to impart to them, then uh, I don't know. I don't know. But on the converse, if you're around someone full of joy and that exudes encouragement and someone who's been filled with that joy so much that it overflows... Man, don't you want to be around that person so much more? Don't you want to be in their presence? Don't you want to, you're texting them, calling them all the time. Hey, let me get some of that. And it should, we should rub off on each other. We should, man, that joy that's overflowing when Christians gather together, when we go to church together, when we're in Bible study or, or small group or connect groups as we gather together, we should be experiencing joy together. And it should just be this overflow, this mishmash, this just joyous expression as we gather. That's why 
uh, it, it was so difficult during the, the, the shutdown or the lockdown when we had to, uh, the church was never closed, but we, we didn't have services in person. And it was so difficult when you're just, uh, you know, for, for me uh, personally, if I could be a little transparent with you, like it's so difficult for me to uh, experience that overflow of joy uh, as it pertains to other people when there was a lack of people in the room. <laughs> But guess what, man, that, that first service back, that service we came back, oh, the joy and the energy in the room, the excitement in the room of God's people gathering together, what great joy we experienced as we recognized, man, there's, there's joy in the Holy Ghost, and we pulled that up on the, on the inside. All right, yet for me, and go back to this, circumstantial, I should have been experiencing joy no matter what whether there's people in the room or not people in the room, because that's circumstantial. And I can be experiencing joy right now, uh, chatting with you all and seeing that, Crystal, yes, joy-filled people are contagious. Amen. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. I like being around you too, my friend, and, and uh, you just exude joy as well. And so we should. We should be exuding joy. And here's the deal. He says that told you these things so that you will, will be filled with my joy. Jesus said, my joy. You'll have my joy. And what is the joy of Jesus? The joy of Jesus isn't what's commonly understood as happiness or excitement, is it? The joy of Jesus is not a pleasure or a life of ease. It's the exhilaration of being right with God. It's the exhilaration of being the righteousness of God in Christ. And that brings joy, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost, all of those are, 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 are entangled together that because of our rightness with God, that's, that's the joy of Jesus. That's the joy of Jesus. And, and, and the fact that Jesus, Jesus always knew who he was. He always knew that he was the Father's Son. He always knew his identity and that he was consciously walking in the Father's love and the Father's care and we can have that joy. We can have his joy as an abiding presence in our lives. So, I want to read you a quote. Uh, this is from Morrison. I don't know exactly who Morrison is, but this is from someone's commentary. The quote is this. When Jesus spoke of his joy, no better, nobody ever asked him what he meant. They didn't look at each other in perplexity. What is he talking about? My joy. To them, it seemed entirely natural that the master should make reference to his gladness. From this, we gather that the joy of Christ was something that they were perfectly familiar with. You know, Jesus wasn't just a pious, holy, solemn person. I love smiling Jesus. You know, there, there was a, years ago, and I'm kind of wrap up, years ago I was doing uh, drama. I did a drama mission trip. Um, with with the school that I attended, North Greenville University, and we for a summer we traveled around to various uh, meetings of the Southern Baptist Convention, and we would do drama for these conferences. And uh, every conference we had, and this was back in two thousand one, two thousand two thousand one, something like that. And if you remember uh, the guy's name who played Jesus in the Matthew, uh, there was a uh, a presentation of the Gospel of Matthew, a video uh, series of the Gospel of Matthew, and this guy's name was Bruce Marciano. And he was referred to as the smiling Jesus because I guess Jesus in other films and other portrayals didn't quite smile as much as, as Bruce did in his portrayal of Jesus. And so Bruce, in his portrayal of Jesus in the Matthew series, was referred to as the smiling Jesus. And I love that because... Jesus, is, Jesus had joy. Jesus had this expression of joy, and it came, uh, it came out in this expression of happiness. And so we can see that his disciples would have been very familiar with the fact that he said, you'll, you'll have my joy. You'll have my joy, and that your joy would overflow. And so that's my prayer for you and for me. And you know what? I've got probably a couple more pages of, of notes. So, so could you stand? Could you stand next week to talk about joy a little bit more? I hope you can. It, it, it really stirs me up. I hope it gets your day started very well. We're going to sing a song called You Have Done Great Things. 
And this is a song from Passion, uh, kind of an older song back in 2002, their Our Love is Loud album. And uh, this is based, again, upon Psalm 126 and taken right out of Scripture. And so uh, it, it talks about this, that the Lord has done great things for us and that we're filled with joy. We're filled with joy about the great things that he has, he has done for us. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Sally, I bet Jesus was a blast to be around, too. He still is. He still is a blast to be around. Amen. You have done great things. Just repeat that. You have done great things. Just declare that. You have done great things. Yeah, you have done great things. Here's the verse. When the Lord brought back the captive ones of Zion, we were like those who breathed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with joyful shouting. They say among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Uh, the Lord has done great things for us. Yes, he has. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. We are filled with joy. Brought back the captive ones of Zion We were like those who dream Our mouths were filled with laughter Our tongues with joyful shouting They say among the nations The Lord has done great things for them The Lord has done great things for us Has He done great things? The Lord has done great things for us We are filled We are filled with joy we are filled with joy For you have done great things Yes, you have done great things For you have done great things Father, you have done great things Oh, you have done great things for us You have done great things for us we are filled with joy. 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 Just let the joy of the Lord bubble over in you. Just let it bubble up from within you and come out upon you today. Oh, let it overflow. Oh, your joy will overflow. Your joy will overflow. Oh, we are filled with joy. Oh, we song that we could sing together that the Lord has done great things for us just like he did for the children of Israel when he brought them back from captivity and they would oh man the people would see that they were so filled with joy that they said the nation said among them the Lord has done great things for them and that's my prayer for you and me as believers in the body of Christ that the world around us the nations around us would look at us and see, man, the Lord 
the Lord has done great things for them, that the joy of the Lord would be so evident in our lives that they couldn't help but take notice. They couldn't help but take notice and they would say themselves, the Lord has done great things for them. And then we would say ourselves, yeah, the Lord has done great things for us. He's the one because in and of myself, in and of my family, man, we're great, we're awesome, cool, yeah, but yeah, we're not as good as we think we are, but the Lord has done great things for us by His work, by the work of the Spirit, by our faith in Christ, we can experience this joy, this joy that would overflow. So that's my prayer for you, that your joy would be full today, that your joy would overflow today, hallelujah. We are filled with joy, let's sing that out. We are filled with joy. We are filled with joy, joy. We are filled with joy, joy. We are filled with joy, 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 joy. We are filled with joy, 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 joy. We are filled with joy, 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 joy. We are filled with joy. done for us that we could be filled with his joy and that our joy would overflow all right so you go and have a blessed amazing joy-filled day a couple of reminders for you from harvest church we'll be back in the building and i pray i pray that we would have this expression of joy about us as we gather together with other believers and that that joy would just be contagious and overflow all throughout um, in his presence and then all throughout the airwaves. We're praying even more so as, as folks in other nations are watching that they would experience that expression of joy even in their homes as, they, um, as we model it and as we, uh, as we go through our, our service on Sunday. Praise the Lord. A couple other things, tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, you've got another devotion from the Harvest Church Network with Pastor Xavier. That is the X Factor. Everybody throw up your X. X Factor tomorrow morning always does a great job. And we've got Love Your Neighbor uh, initiative still happening. We're prayer walking our neighborhoods, praying for our neighbors, seeing incredible testimonies of life change happening in our neighborhoods and influence and impact. And your prayers make a difference. Amen, amen, amen. And then connect groups, connect groups at Harvest are starting back up beginning this Sunday. You've got connect groups, so you'll find those on our website under that connect tab and uh, can find a group. We met with the leaders last night and just had a great time uh, discussing that we want to see folks changed and transformed and, and that community and that community of believers. And so we'll, we're going to experience that. You'll, you'll find a group that will be perfect for you and you'll find your fit. My wife and I are, are leading a, a group for, for college and young adults, and so you'll find our information on there, uh, joining at our home, and, and would invite you up here. I'll even show you the office. I'll even show you the office. Uh, it's, it is a sight to behold. <laughs> uh, but hope you can get plugged into a connect group. Please, please do so. It will be super beneficial for you as you gather with other folks, either virtually um, on Zoom or online or uh, in homes or on campus. There are many groups to be involved in. So with that, I want to wish you many, many blessings today. And uh, please, if this blessed you, like, comment, share, the whole, you know the deal. And uh, we can share that contagious joy that we have as disciples of Christ. Amen, amen, amen. You guys have a blessed day. We'll see you soon. <laughs>